So let's start off with the concept of project delivery. The reason I want to start with this is because it impacts the way that we see a lot of the other elements about how the organizing systems work. So once we start talking about project delivery, meaning how does a uh, building actually come into existence through what kinds of contracts, uh, what are the relationships through everybody? The project delivery sort of covers all those, those kinds of topics. So let's sort of run through a couple different possibilities. Uh, the first sort of most standard way of thinking about project delivery is design, bid, build. So this is how, when you think of a kind of classic standard, you know, this is the way that people imagine what an architectural and construction project, uh, how it's organized. And in that context, uh, there's an owner, there's an architect, and there's a contractor. And there's this sort of triumvirate of relationships. And each one of them plays their role, and they all oversee each other, and there's sort of, uh, it's a very sort of clear set of relationships. Uh, there's some big advantages to design, bid, build, and there's some pretty significant disadvantages to it. So before we get too deep into the advantages and disadvantages of design, bid, build, let's review a couple of the other possibilities. Another one is design, build. So design, build is where there's just a, uh, a single entity uh, where there's one owner and then there's the design builder. And that design builder is the architect and the contractor. So there's only one set of relationships. Construction manager is where there's uh, and say an architect, an owner, and then a CM. But that CM, construction manager, is actually sort of on the ownership team. So let's think about some of the advantages and disadvantages of these three different project delivery methods. It's something like design, bid, build. If you kind of think it out, how this works, it's pretty straightforward. The architect is given a contract to design a building. That building design goes on for X number of months. That process goes through schematic design, design development, uh, contract documents, bidding, and then construction administration. Uh, so in that process, before we get to the bidding, all of the design work has happened uh, up to that point. So there's a very long period of time where we get the contract and then the design work happens for a very long time, at which point the bidding then eventually happens. So that's the bid point, and that contractor is chosen, and then the whole contract uh, is built out and the building is finished. So while there's certain advantages to this, one of the disadvantages is this takes a very long time. because There's no overlap, everything happens sequentially, and that process just takes a very, um, that process just takes a long time. One of the key advantages to design, bid, build is that because I'm bidding it out and I have a full set of drawings and a full set of understanding because we've gone through the entire process of, uh, of designing that whole time, so this whole thing, we've figured everything out, presumably, uh, that means that by the time we get to this bidding moment, we actually have a pretty good set of drawings and when we get the bids, those bids are apples to apples bids and we can very clearly see which one is the low bid. We can also see which one's the high bid. We can see which ones seem to have other pieces of information that are, they're supplying to us because everything is sort of easily relatable to each other. So the advantage of design, bid, build is really that you know the low. You know the low bid, you, you have much more information about it. Uh, but it takes that very long, long time. So similarly, let's talk about design, build. So the big advantage of design build is that it's one phone call. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that if you're the owner and something goes wrong and in a typical design bid build situation, there's always the danger that something like uh, there's a difference of opinion between the architect and the contractor. And so the contractor say, well, hey, it's not our fault. It's not right in the drawings. And then the architect say, no, 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 the drawings are fine. It's really the contractor's fault. And that kind of situation really drives the owners crazy because, you know, how do they know? What do they, how do they figure out which is the correct way? So the advantage of design build is that one phone call, anything goes wrong, it doesn't matter to the owner. It's one phone call to get something figured out. And it's just in the entity of the design builder to figure out where the, where the problem lies. So there's some huge advantages to that. Uh, another advantage is that it's uh, 
potentially a shorter timeline. There's a design period that's going to happen, but that design period is likely to be overlapped with some of the uh, uh, process of uh, building. So while the design is happening, some of the building can actually start taking place because it's all one entity. So they can be ordering materials, they can be moving forward in terms of getting ready on the site. There's all kinds of different things. Uh, obviously, they still have to get permits and everything, so certain things are, are in the same sort of process. But there's a lot of stuff that can happen uh, overlapped and therefore condense the time. That's another big advantage of design-build. One of the problems with design-build is that it lacks some transparency. It lacks a little bit of the oversight that's built into the design-bid-build concept. Right? With the design-bid-build, you had that situation where you know, if the contractor is starting to charge too much for something, well, then the architect and the owner have the ability to sort of talk it through and figure out and make sure that, that they can control that situation. If the architect is designing something that's too crazy, it's not appropriate for the owner, well, then the owner and the contractor have some ability to sort of oversee that process and, and have some commentary back. And if the owner is being onerous and ridiculous and not paying their bills or you know, something along those lines, well, then the architect and the contractor have the ability to sort of help each other out and kind of manage that process. So the design bid build, there's, there's this sort of constant flow of oversight. The design build, because it's just the one entity, you don't have that sort of uh, uh, ability to look over each other's shoulder and make sure that everything is sort of rolling along. So that's one of the downsides and one of the reasons that owners don't like it. So they like it because it's potentially faster and it's the one phone call, but it then has these other issues of lack of oversight. So how about the construction manager? So the construction manager, as I said, is there's a situation where there's an owner and then they essentially have, this is not technically accurate, but I'm just going to, it's easier to understand, they essentially have an, uh, an employee that is a construction manager. So that, whether that's technically an employee or a separate contract, there's a bunch of different possibilities. But if you think of it as an employee, it sort of makes it easier to understand. That completely alters the set of relationships. What that means is that that construction manager is on board as part of the team from the very start. So the relationship to the architect is uh, the same line that's connecting to the owner is also connecting to the construction manager. Now, there's a bunch of very significant advantages to this. One is that while the design part is starting, the construction manager can start having input at various key points along the way in order to make sure that the drawings are representing something that can be priced effectively, in order to make sure the owner's desires are being sort of clearly understood. So there's a great deal of opportunity for the owner to have impact on to the design process uh, as well as to have a real strong control over the cost implications of the design. The uh, building then starts out uh, once that's all done, and that process then is set up where instead of hiring a separate GC, the construction manager hires their own subs, and that way the overhead and profit that would normally go to a GC stays in-house for the owner. Now, that's a huge advantage if you're an owner. You start looking around, you're looking at the spreadsheets, and you see all the prices lined up, and then down at the bottom there's something that says overhead and profit for the GC. And that just drives owners crazy because they're like, oh, why do I have to pay all this extra money? Uh, so how can I get that for myself? Well, I can do that by having a construction manager. But then the problem, of course, is the reason there's overhead and profit built in is because there's actually a fair amount of risk involved. And so the owner, when they take on the construction manager role, uh, are also taking on the risk. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the idea there is, is you get to know more information about the uh, cost of the construction earlier on. It's more of a team mentality. So instead of the adversarial aspect of bidding, everybody's on one team. So there's a bunch of advantages to construction managers and there's a few disadvantages. That risk reward aspect can be a big drawback if things go bad.